Good day YouTubers and welcome to part 2 of fitting the Furuno SCX20 satellite compass to my base board. In a previous episode I was complaining about how hard it is to feed wires through the Bimini and we continue to do so in this episode. Part of the reason is that the hole they've drilled in the hinge section of the Bimini is just way smaller than the tube diameter or the internal tube diameter. If they'd made it the same size as the internal tube diameter, this would be very, very easy. So anyway, let's get on with the installation, and I'll show you how I coped. I didn't turn the camera on for the beginning of this, I've already done one wire. I'm just splicing the NMEA cable where I had to cut it to get it through to the satellite GPS antenna. So I've got my third hand here just helping me out. I'd never be able to get it together by myself without it. They're not real dear and even though I don't use it very often I'm sure glad I've got it. Very awkward getting this together. Just give it plenty of time to solidify before I move it. The more you get done, the harder it is to get the next one on. I find anyway. Okay, well that's only the beginning of it now. I've got them soldered together. Now I've got to insulate them from each other. Alright, I've got them separated. So, what I'm going to do to insulate them initially, this isn't the end of the job, this is just the start of it. I'm going to use some liquid PVC. Tape. liquid electrical tape they call it and I'm going to use a fair bit of this in several applications just let it dribble off and I'll trim the, any excess there is later on and I'll give it several more applications of this trimming some of the runs in between. Then I'll put a bit of PVC tape around one of each pair of wires just in case there's any loose bits of wire sticking out. Then I'll wrap the um, shield around it again the way it was as far as I can. Won't quite meet. And then I'll get some aluminium tape and wrap that around them and that will have it as good as ever. I need a space to work. I think I might be in a position now to do the rest of it on camera. I've already put the PVC tape around the wires, the positive and negative wire pair and the signal wire pair. Now I'm putting this shield back over them and I'm going to, use, I'm going to wrap some of my own aluminium tape around that. do this without the camera getting in the way. At 
keeping, I leave the paper backing on as much as I can so you don't end up with a sticky, stuck up mess of tape that I can't do anything with. I don't know how we're going for being on camera with this job. I can't look at the camera and do the job. I'm in the wrong angle to see what's happening in the camera. So we just hope. Oh yeah, that's one. Key to splicing anything like this is making sure your shields are okay. And I'm pretty sure this alcohol tape is gonna, gonna look after that for me. Bring the shield wire back over it. It won't be all neatly um, planted along it, but as long as it's along it, that's all that matters. The, alcohol, the aluminium tape will make sure we get a good contact. Alright, another one for that. a little bit more around that end where it didn't quite come off as well as I would have liked. Plenty of alcohol tape here that's shielded, plenty shielded. It's just uh, more a matter of getting a neat end now so that when I put the heat shrink on it it will hold nice and rigid because this is going to be a failure in the wire it will generally be where you've soldered it. And if you make that solder nice and rigid, then you shouldn't have any worries about a failure out here. And one way to make it rigid is to have plenty of tape on it and then put some heat shrink over that. Oh dear. Well, that was a job I wasn't looking forward to, and it's nearly done, so I'm pretty pleased about that. And I think I did most of that off camera, which I'm really annoyed about. <sighs> Never mind, I'll see how it comes out. I think I had the camera pointing a little bit low to see most of what I was doing there, but anyway, that's the um, aluminium tape. All wrapped around it. Right. And in the money put some. PVC tape around this end to hold it by until I can get some heat on it. Heat not going to do the PVC tape any good, but can't be helped. I'm not having my fingers there while it's heating. Okay, that's got him. Let that cool down and I've got some uh, big tube to put over it and that should keep it really rigid so that we don't have any issues with the um, solder failing, solder joints failing. There we go. 
goes your tube. See if you shrink him enough. Right, there we go. I like that. Cool. And that should be about as strong as we're going to get um, with a solder joint. I'm pretty sure it's going to carry the signal okay. We'll soon tell once we get everything plugged in. Well, also once the uh, MFD arrives, which I'm still waiting on. And finally, getting to put the satellite antenna on. That plug there is keyed, so it only goes in one way. And I'm guessing it's about that way. Done up nice and tight. I'll just test fit and make sure this is all going to go in because I had to cut the cable and splice it to get it to fit. Oh, yep, she'll work. What Bruno want us to do is to wrap some self-sealing tape around this. Self-balkanising, that's the word I'm looking for. Because they want it sealed so that no water or moisture can get in. So that's what I'm going to do. Now, uh, some ordinary PVC tape over top of that to protect it. Right, there we go. Front doesn't... Oh, it will we'll, we'll go on more than one way, but there's basically the front and the back, and the way I've got the screws arranged, it can only go on the right way. That's a, a very bulky splice, but what I've done is uh, splice the wire well and put layer on layer on layer of um, heat shrink on it. I had to push the heat shrink back up because I forgot that the hole down the other end is smaller than the hole up this end, so I had to push it back up a little bit, but uh, it's good now. And that will definitely stop any moisture from getting into the splice, but also it's made the splice very stiff. You can't bend that, so that means that the wire can't bend at the solder join and it won't break there. I think I might put something on to seal these threads before I put them up, just so they don't come loose over time. Hmm, what should I do? Silicon seal for anti-corrosion, that sounds good. I'll use some of that. Pretty easy to put on, I've already put one on for the uh, antenna there. I'll just show you with this one. It's split down the centre, so what I do is I just open it up like that, flip it over, and then it's really easy just to slide it along and keep, keep slipping the wire in. Of course, when you're trying to show someone, it's never quite as easy, but there you go. And then I like to uh, work it up into the, into the hole a little bit so that the wire doesn't chase. Speaking of which, I just noticed that the lazy sods that put the, uh, did the fit out on the boat, not baseball, but the people that did the fit out, have drilled a tiny hole just big enough for two wires and it's just left the, the wires to chafe there on that hole with no loom tube to protect it. <sighs> that's an invitation for a short circuit. I've got to wonder about the uh, intelligence of some people. Anyway, mine are done right, and as soon as it's been this long, that way hole, just hope that one stays okay. If it doesn't, I've got a fuse in it. I fuse everything multiple times. Um, the fuse will protect me, and then I'll have to take it all apart and fix the bloody thing. Oh, geez, that's annoying. That is so annoying. They've done this one right. They've got the lean tube in there properly. They've done this one right here. It's going to do a bodgy job on this one. Yeah, okay, gives you a six. I'll show you this too. This is the hole that comes up through the uh, hinge in the bimini, and they've only just drilled it big enough to get a couple of wires through now, really. I request to the guys that do this stuff, if you ever watch this video, how about putting a bigger hole in here? 
you know, you're not going to lose any strength if you make the hole as big as the inside diameter of the pipe. You know, it can be a little bit smaller, but uh, really you could make it the same as the outside diameter of the pipe, push the pipe into the hole and weld it there and it'd be just as strong. And bloody tight easier to thread wires through. You know, as, it, as it is here, I should be able to get wires up for a, a radar if I ever decided to put one on. But I can't. Uh, I'd have to take all the wiring out of this to do it and somehow then manage to enlarge that hole and nothing I've tried nothing, no tools I've got to do a reasonably good job on stainless steel it is really tight I just barely managed to get this wire to go through with the others I've got the radio aerial and the uh, floodlight and the anchor light going up through there and now the um, satellite antenna and it is tight in this hole they haven't um, edged it to take the burr away but the wire is so tight in there I don't think it's going to matter because it's not going to move to shape anyway it hasn't done a great deal of damage with the other wires being there and allowed to move so I think it'll be okay but it would be nice had they deburred it and as I say I can't deburr it without taking the wires out because no tool I've got can touch it short of the proper deburring bit in the drill. So it is what it is, I think it'll be alright. Okay, well there it is, the Peruno satellite antenna up there in all its glory. At long last, I had to get my wife to come down, lift the bimini back up while I fed the wires down so I didn't get pinched. But it all worked and that is great. Now I just got to put some loom tube on those couple of bits of wire up there and the other one on the aerial and fix that up down there so it goes back into the boat. And there it is, all done. I've had a chance to get it out on the water since filming all this and I am thoroughly impressed just with the autopilot unit. I haven't got my MFD yet to see how it compensates for the sonar but by geez, the autopilot is the best I've ever used. It just tracks perfectly. Doesn't matter what the state of the sea is, the autopilot can just hang in there and track really well. So just on that basis alone, I'm going to give the satellite compass a tick. But do stand by, I will have a video up in the near future, I hope, when I get my MFD. I'll put a video up on just how it compensates for the waves when recording the sonar picture. And from everything I've heard about it, I shall be thoroughly impressed with that as well. So make sure you subscribe if you don't want to miss that. Like and comment below. It all helps the channel. Until next time, good fishing.